This is just incredible. The massive amount of people that are in this room represent all the support we've been getting from the whole community, from the law enforcement family, and especially from the Rochester Police Department. We're honored by all the support. From that first night in the hospital, it became obvious to me that the officers in the Rochester Police Department are now my family. I'm told it will always be that way, and I believe it. I also became aware of the sisterhood among the wives. I could spot them coming down the line. They all had the same look, a look of pride, of empathy, and of the awareness that it could have been any one of our husbands. And I'm grateful to them for coming alongside me as well. And thank you to everybody who spoke. Um, the stories were great. Daryl mentioned a lot of you. I, I know you guys by last name, and I know a lot of the stories. Um, a common theme was his driving. It's funny because he would tell me that I wasn't a good driver. <laughs> but I would remind him that I never drove into a building and that was the end of that conversation. Um, Lieutenant Paul, you are in my heart. You've come alongside me in the last week as so many of you have. But I want to thank you for sharing your anger today because I'm angry too. I'm angry for my children. I've been asked, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. <sighs> I've been asked how I feel about the man responsible for my husband's death, and uh, in the right time I will talk about that. But what I can say is that he does not have power over me or over this community. <laughs> One horrible man is responsible for this, but look at all the wonderful people that came together because of it. And myself, my husband, and my family is honored. So thank you to everybody. I was afraid that I would come up here and um, this would be the time when the emotions would catch up with me. But Richie cried enough for the both of us, so. <laughs> so thank you for that, Richie. Um, now to my official speech. I struggled to decide what was appropriate to say in this setting. Today is all about Daryl celebrating who he is and honoring his accomplishments. The press has given me the opportunity to speak about the kind of man that he is and I appreciate that. Protecting and serving was a way of life for Daryl. He did it because he believed in this city. I have kept a scrapbook of his accomplishments and he would come home with chief's letters of recognition and not even tell me. I would find them on the counter because that's the kind of officer he was. He did it for the community and not for recognition. He was the most incredible father I could have hoped for my children. Neither of them will lose the investment that Daryl has made in them. He was also an incredible husband. He is an incredible husband because he will always be with me. He is my rock. He is taking care of me in every way. I used to tell him that he taught me how to breathe. When we first met, I had problems with panic attacks and he was able to talk me down from that and teach me how to handle them myself. He stood by me through difficult times and he forgave me when I fell short of the wife he deserved. I've been told I'm strong and that's yet to be seen. I know I will break down, but I'm being strong now to honor my husband. He was incredibly strong always 
God has been carrying us through this time. I have felt his grace. Um, in the last year, uh, we just had an incredible year. Last month, we celebrated our 10th anniversary, and it was truly the most beautiful anniversary that we celebrated. After a few years of trying unsuccessfully and having a miscarriage, a few months ago, uh, we had our baby, our miracle baby, and Daryl got to spend three months bonding with her. He had a relatively minor finger injury in January, but he was able to be home with us until two days before his death. So we got eight months of family time together. And our last weekend together, Labor Day, was spent in the mountains as a family. So those were precious memories that we'll always have. We'll never understand why God allows these things to happen. He's given us free will. And as I think Lieutenant Paul said, some people like Thomas Johnson III have taken that freedom and used it in the worst possible way. I've been asked how I feel about him, and when the time is appropriate, I will speak up. I'll be at every hearing. I'll be at his inevitable sentencing, and I will be there to remind him who I am and to let him know that he does not have power over me. I... Thank you. Thank you. Like Father Don said, Daryl wasn't very vocal about his faith, but I have absolute reason to believe, to know that he is with God in heaven. I used to try to talk to him about it sometimes, and he wasn't a big talker in general, but he would tell me, don't worry, me and the G-man are good. <laughs> and that was all I needed. I have a list that I'm keeping of all the businesses and individuals who have, have reached out in special ways. And um, I was advised not to get into all that today, but uh, when the time is right, I'm hoping to acknowledge that because our appreciation is as sincere as your support has been. Daryl will always be with us. We'll never get over it because that would mean letting go of him. But we will get on with life together. We'll have to learn how to live without him. But I already know that my children and I, our entire family, will not be doing that alone. There's one other thing that um, just touched me over the last couple of days. So many people have come out and shared their stories with me. Um, people who were on calls that he came to, people who were touched by the way he handled things. Um, people who have lost their children, who have lost their spouses, who have given me hope to know that it does and it doesn't get easier. But there is hope because we carry him with us. I am incredibly grateful for the support now and in the future because I know it will continue. So, thank you.